Yeah, my whistling's horrible. What else am I going to do when you watch me disassemble my stuff? Anyway. My uh, other drives can. So... You get me, you get to watch me install the other drives. And no, I didn't come up with the video yet to show you bifurcation. But what better way to show you than uh, with four drives instead of two. So, uh, I'm actually going to attempt to edit this video together with the other video where I show you bifurcation. Hmm. Just being a little more stubborn than I thought it would be. There we go. We got it out. So you get to see my cooling solution a little bit better there. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really new other than that. So let's see. I will probably put the lid back on. So I did get bifurcation to work, and I did get the drive set up and raid. But, you know, that content isn't nearly as exciting as setting up four drives. So, promises, promises. I promise I will show you that very, very soon. And, uh, you probably won't notice the difference because... This will be edited with the other footage, and it'll all seamlessly go into one. Right now you get to watch me install my new drives, and I will show you those in a few seconds here. Maybe a minute or two. Okay, flip this over. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I did not want to happen. Uh, if you saw the other video leading up to this one, it looks like it'll work. If you saw the other one video leading up, leading up to this one, you'll probably remember that I was hoping I could reuse these thermal pads, and I think I can. Yeah, I think I could do it. So I'll proceed to take these M.2s out. I had zero issues with them, so that's uh, a good thing. I don't know what kind of thermal characteristics the other drives um, will have or requirements they will need. I'll find that out the hard way, <laughs> or maybe the easy way. Sometimes the hard way is the easy way. And if you can figure out that... Uh, mindless babble uh well here i guess in a better headspace than some people yeah. yeah you get to watch the uninstalling of m.2 it's almost ex almost as exciting as the installing of in m.2 i'll use these drives on another project heck i might just put them in my personal computer they're nice drives Anyway, what's this about? These bad boys, they just came in today. I hope they're not fake. <laughs> I don't know. They're probably not. I don't think they are. Let's see. We'll find out. Intel NVMe Optane. No idea. No idea. I just know that Optane's supposed to be cool. Uh, cool, that lines up. Oh, yeah, I should get the other standoffs. I will put those in. There's a little Ziploc baggie with the standoffs there. The extra, one of the extra standoffs. 
And here's the other. Yeah, my trusty scissors or snips as they call them in some other circles. I probably left them in my car. They tend to fall out of my pocket. And that's a standoff and that goes, see we put the last one in the 22 something something, 2280 I believe. I need glasses. So, get to a certain age, unless you are genetically blessed and have taken absolute immaculate care of your eyes, you will eventually need glasses. Just a fact of life. And at the very least, I need reading glasses. Now, I can tell you that using cell phones for games and stuff... Probably not the best thing for your eyes. So, if you are still young, <laughs> and why would you be watching this video? Who knows? Who knows why? But if you are still young, heed that advice. Look away from your damn cell phone every once in a while. More than just every once in a while. Like, you know, there's a whole world out there. There's a whole world out there. And I know. I know. I'm not just being a jerk. I know it's easy to get absorbed, but I can tell you there is definitely a whole world out there. And uh, it may not, you may not believe it, but I do things other than assembling servers and PCs and rambling on on YouTube. I actually like occasionally, when I'm not busy working myself to death, um, get out. I actually fish. Maybe one day I'll bore you with a video of that. I know you're excited about that. Anyway, so these drives are of the same capacity as the Sabrents, but they're a little bit different. So Intel's Optane. Um, and maybe I'm not 100% versed on how it works, but uh, it is flash storage. But it's also considered, I think, uh, what is the term? Persistent memory. So it has a much higher endurance and should be much faster. And of course, I'm cheating now because I can't really compare apples to apples because, or apples to oranges or whatever because instead of installing just two, I'm installing four. These are supposed to be brand new. They look brand new. But I don't know. Find out. Find out if they work even. They look legit. They look legit. exciting look at all that it's beautiful that is a thing of beauty a thing of beauty oh, i don't want that stuck to there these are probably worthless if they're a little bit bigger or if they had like a ziploc i would uh, consider them not worthless but i'll probably end up just tossing them in the garbage i don't know if they're recyclable if they are then no that's where they'll go this stuff is gummy as hell But looks like I'll be able to reuse it, so that's good. These guys are seated nice and neat. Okay. So Why am I building this thing? Well, I kind of started on this journey 
with my fascination with well first of all I do enjoy electronics I do enjoy tech um, but I'm not made of money so one way to get semi cool tech semi advanced tech maybe not compared to the desktop industry but one way to get it is through diligent research and then going on eBay and finding uh, decommissioned server equipment. Now, so you would think to yourself, why? Why would you want to buy old stuff if you want advanced technology? And I guess the short answer is turning longer. Um, <laughs> So, the reason why you would do that is because the server industry is advancing way faster than the desktop industry. I gotta take this lid back off. I'll put this card aside. Hopefully, I don't drop it. Okay, good. So, with that comes opportunity. If you are willing, to do your research and to set up well this isn't even a rack but you set up a rack I have I have a rack well I have a homemade rack as you guys saw my new ones coming so those of you triggered by that will be at ease very soon anyway if you're willing to set up a server rack most of the time, but I mean, there's desktop servers like this one. Um, do your research. You can actually have uh, some pretty powerful tech if you're into power. Now, I've done my share of gaming. I don't game nearly as much as I used to. Um, oh, this is cool. See, I installed this fan right here. That actually puts... Uh, cooling directly over the PCIe cards, which is important for me. Um, so you, yeah, if you just like the tech, you like messing with cool tech, um, you'll find that the aftermarket in the server space um, can be quite the bargain bin considering what you would pay retail for this stuff when it was new. Anyway, so that's the assembly process so I'm gonna this segment's gonna be done and then I will hopefully in the next segment have somewhat of a demonstration of how to set this thing up um, so until then bye all right so PCIe bifurcation uh, this is gonna be all chopped up and I am holding my cell phone with my other hand so, um, when you log into your motherboard, any motherboard, server, even PC, standard PC motherboard, um, when you log in, you'll come you'll, to your BIOS, CMOS, whatever, you'll find a screen similar to this. Actually, this would be something typical of today's servers. They don't really do anything fancy with their setup. Um, anyway, so it's the main screen. You see all the MAC addresses and stuff for the LANs and whatnot. Move over to advanced and you see a whole bunch of other stuff. So what I need is the PCI subsystem settings. Hit enter. And see, I already have it set up there. So, oh, there you go. Now you can see it. I already have it set up. So all the PCIe LANs. And there's five, well, there's seven that I can configure from here. Don't know where number six is. That might be res reserved for the NVMe slot. Um, so you, you look at this. I already had it set up because I had the other drives on there. But if I, I go to the menu, usually it's set to auto. It can be set to disabled. I don't recommend doing that. I wouldn't even know why you would. You can have different... Different settings. X16, that would be something for a GPU, and then you got other things here, um, depending on what you need. So you want this one, 4x4x4x4. 
that's the one you want. I don't think there's any other way to bifurcate it, at least that I'm aware of. So that would allow you to use four different NVMe drives. Um, so once you have that set up, you would go to I'd escape out of this, move over to save and exit, save changes and exit, All right, and click enter. And yes, and it's going to reboot. And I'm not going to make you wait through that, so next segment.